So we're going to start off with Professor Costa Carantinis. He's the, the, the Van Villette Chair Professor here in the University of Saskatchewan in the Department of Agricultural Economics. He's actually on leave for the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. And we've been collaborating with, with Costa with the, with the uh, Swedish University. There, he's a professor of business education. He was previously professor in the University of Copenhagen, a guest faculty in Wageningen, in the Netherlands, in Greece, and in the University of Perugia in Italy. His main research interests are in the, in the economics of agribusiness and value chains, both in Western and in developing countries. And he's written a lot of uh, publications and published a book recently, A New Paradigm for Greek Agriculture. So welcome Costas, and he's going to talk about global food security, the demographics, and the role of youth. So he's going to really set the scene for the rest of this session. Thank you all for coming here, especially our uh, panelists here that they came all the way from uh, Africa and from India. Uh, I'm really honored to share the, the panel with you. Um, I don't know, Anne, if I have a, you, you promised solutions. I don't think I have a s solution, but I have a proposition. There are several propositions, and that's, I think that's my job, and that's why the university pays me to make propositions. Um, you mentioned the book uh, that uh, I published recently on, on Greek agriculture, and I wanted to start with this because um, although my presentation is about Africa, I must say that uh, I've been uh, working uh, with Africa and in Africa the last 20, 25 years, I think. And... Um, Actually, uh, Africa was the magnifying lens to help me understand my country. And, um, and the, the book and the work that I have done in Greece actually was inspired and it was um, really, um, um, you know, my African experience helped me to understand a lot of the problems in Greece. You know, we, we heard today about unemployment, youth unemployment. And we heard something like 60 and more percent. Well, youth unemployment in Greece today is 60 percent. Um, so a lot of these parameters are not very different. But um, I'm not going to talk about Greece, I promise you, because you, you, you came here to hear uh, what I have to say about uh, Africa and youth. And, uh, but I will, I will close with this. So first of all, let, let me start with two motivational propositions, uh, so to speak. Uh, recently, uh, uh, I mean, th this is some, some facts, and I think uh, Saginga mentioned uh, a little bit about um, uh, the president of, uh, of the African Development Bank earlier, but um, youth in agriculture is, is a sexy subject. Everybody talks about youth in agriculture. In uh, the, the decade that we just finished was declared as the youth, uh, the decade of youth by the heads of states of African Union. And uh, 2017 um, was declared as the year that uh, they, will, they will try to harness the demographic dividend uh, through investments in youth. These are, again, the heads of state on African Union. And uh, so came in 2017, and uh, Dr. Um, Adesina, the president of the African Development Bank, was awarded the Nobel Prize of uh, Agriculture of, or of, uh, yeah, of uh, food in, in Iowa. And, and actually, I mean, he's, for, for those of us that are following that, he's, uh, he's one of the... Uh, most prominent advocates of youth in agriculture, together with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Saginga that we heard today. And uh, he actually dedicated his award and he, the, the award money uh, for this purpose. And he also declared that uh, the African Development Bank is going to invest um, um, very large amounts of money. We heard some numbers that they are adjusted, so I'm not going to stick with this. Perhaps they have been... Um, uh, revised, 
But definitely, it's something that uh, there is some hardware and there is hard, hard money thrown into uh, investments in youth in agriculture. Um, so I want to, to talk a little bit about this, and I want to basically argue that um, th there are some things we have to look at a little bit closer to this issue and, and look at the, at the parameters that will help us to make this uh, effective to, so we can deliver something uh, when we invest money in agriculture and, and youth in agriculture. The second thing that I want to say is that, um, you know, for the, all those of us in the Western world, uh, this is not a problem of Africa only. This youth problem in Africa is also our problem. This picture here is uh, from the Mediterranean. These are African, mainly youth, that are trying to reach uh, the European Union. This is from uh, Lampedusa. That's an island that belongs to the Italy. That's um, just uh, a few hundred miles uh, from the European um, coastline. Um, same thing. So it's not a problem that we can ignore, and it's not out of our benevolence only and, and uh, thinking that we, we, we will help Africa. We're helping ourselves by helping youth in Africa. And, and I think the, if, if we want to do something, we have to do something in Africa. If we want to do something to reduce this problem, we have to do it in Africa. And not what uh, Europe is doing today. And I must say, you know, coming from Europe, that one of the biggest challenges in Europe today is this problem. Um, I come from Greece, a, a country that has tremendous problems with the, you know, the financial crisis and all that, and that is one of the problems that we're, we're dealing big time, okay? the problem of immigrants uh, in, in Greece. But let me, um, let me go a little bit uh, further and, 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 and give you my take on this. Uh, why do we think it is, uh, why in my view it is a problem? It's a problem because of all these issues. You know, there is, especially in, in um, uh, when a Western and, and a Northern European or, um, you know, a, a researcher looks at this, it is, uh, it, is, it is the issues, you know, that we face in terms of youth migration, terrorism, even terrorism, okay? Um, also, um, recently, and I think that is uh, where um, um, Dr. Uh, Saginga has been a pioneer, is uh, he brought our attention to the, the, the connection of youth, youth, youth and agriculture with the, with the work that they are doing uh, at their institute in AITA. And uh, I'm not going to go through this, although I, I deleted a lot of slides because uh, I, I was going to present that program. But we heard it today um, uh, from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Okay. Um, youth um, uh, is increasing, uh, in, especially in Africa. As you see the red line and the projections, uh, the projections are that it's going to increase. Uh, today, people under 24 years old are about 60% of the population in Africa. It's going to be less uh, by 2050, but still it's half of the population is going to be less than 24 years old. Um, and um, unemployment, we heard today about unemployment and youth. Um, these numbers, I think they're wrong. Uh, I think w when you talk to people uh, that are uh, down there, uh, these unemployment rates that we have in, in this figure um, are, are, are highly uh, underestimating the actual problem. Uh, the actual problem of unemployment in youth in, in, uh, in Africa is much, much uh, harder. Um, uh, because they're not recorded properly, uh, they're not reported probably, the problem is really much worse. Um, and uh, there, are, there are some facts that we have already collected. So uh, uh, people in sub-Saharan Africa um, under the age of 25, they have three times more chances to be unemployed than adults. And, um, this subgroup makes about 62% of the population in, in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, but you know, when we're talking about uh, business of, uh, in, 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 agri in, in agriculture, um, and we look a little bit deeper on this, and this is a study uh, on Angola, um, 
they don't really i mean although we see a lot of new jo new new business there they're not employing a lot of people okay so so for example in this survey they found that about 78% uh, of uh, youth agribusiness uh, created uh, about uh, five uh, jobs um, in malawi um, 88% of the youth business they don't even create additional jobs okay so we, we, I mean, it's not an automatic solution. We have to look uh, much uh, closer to this. <clears throat> also, in terms of technologies, they're not really uh, on the frontier. They're, they're employing uh, technologies, again, from the same survey. They were employing technologies that they were uh, a bit outdated. Um, and uh, most of agribusiness were not, m most of the young startups, they were not even in agriculture. Uh, a small percentage of them were in agriculture. Um, so uh, we, we, we have the population problem, and um, we know that um, you know, the distribution of people undernourished, where are they concentrated? They're concentrated mainly in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa particularly. And also we have a tremendous um, um, unequal distribution of, of income. Uh, I think these are, I mean, uh, th these are uh, figures that you know uh, very, very, very well. Uh, just, uh, just another illustration. I think that is um, that is something that uh, is mind-boggling. Uh, if you look at Africa and and, uh, and India mainly, uh, the percentage of population that live under ten dollars uh, a day in purchasing power in poverty terms is is uh, is very large. Um, whereas rich people uh, are, are elsewhere. Um, so two things here is, is youth, uh, agriculture uh, on one hand, and then um, uh, urban um, distribution of population. So we, what we have is we have every year there is uh, such a tremendous uh, migration to urban areas that we have one city and the equivalent of one city of 30 million uh, created every year. The equivalent of a city. This is how many people move from rural to urban areas. Okay? Um, and this, uh, this trend is increasing. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to uh, that, I, that I mentioned is, um, is this whole uh, discussion about the, what they call the demographic dividend. What is the demographic dividend? Um, is, is basically the idea that if you have a large, uh, if you have an increasing share of the population that is on the working age, that is between 15 and 60, um, then uh, if, that, if that share of the population is, is, uh, is, is increasing uh, relative to the rest, then you have less dependencies and, and, then, and then you can have growth. We have seen that um, example, that, that uh, condition of the, the demographic dividend providing growth in the economy in the cases of North, uh, South Korea, for example. But we have seen also that percentage of the population not providing nothing basically in other parts, for example, in Latin America. Uh, Africa is in this window now. Uh, but the question is, can Africa really harness uh, this potential? Can, can Africa really harness this potential that there is an increasing number of working people uh, relative to the dependents, that is very young, that is children and also very old? Uh, can, can they do that? Well, in order to do that, some conditions have to be in place. And these conditions are that these people that are in, in employment age, uh, they have to be educated, jobs have to be around, and also the working environment, the enabling environment has to be in place. If you don't have these, uh, together with uh, health programs and so on, the demographic dividend is not going to produce nothing. Um, so, if you look at this red line here, that is what I'm talking about. This is where Africa is. So, th so if you take the percentage of this population, you know, that is on working age, that is increasing um, relative to basically, um, you know, this is um, if you look at this, um, the, the rest of the world and so on. So. Um, <clears throat> 
Another parameter that I wanted to, to say, and then um, you will see that um, where, where uh, some of the ideas that I'm going to, to bring and I, I hope we will discuss, is that there is a constraint there, there is a parameter uh, that we have not, uh, we should not uh, forget, and that is that the majority of farms are small holding. They are very small in Africa in, uh, in most of the developing world. And uh, we cannot really move um, uh, fast. We cannot move in this, uh, what we call the agricultural transformation uh, fast and ignore this fact. Okay? And um, I, will, I will talk a little bit about this. So, so m most of the farms this is world statistics. The, most of the farms are, are uh, small holdings fa uh, and, and family farms. Um, in, in Africa, of course, the numbers are much higher, as you can see here. Um, and um, I think um, w when we look at, at this question of how an economy transforms uh, from an agricultural based economy into industrialized economy and um, as the you know the in, in development economists they were talking about this and especially in the 1980s that this is the way to go um, an economy has to go through this uh, transformation um, the economic transformation where agriculture will be reduced they will release uh, um, um, labor into industry and so on and so forth. Uh, we have seen this happening uh, in, um, you know, during the Industrial Revolution um, in, in Europe, uh, but we haven't seen this happening uh, in Africa and I think all this, and, and most of the developing world, and I think most of these uh, policies um, that they were proposed along this line did not really go take us anywhere. Um, so I think, um, especially after the 1980s, the consensus is that we cannot have growth without agriculture. Okay, so one thing is, um, you know, if we look in detail about, because the, the main argument is that labor productivity is very low in, in agriculture relative to industry, therefore, uh, if you move labor from agriculture to industry, you increase the average productivity, production increases, growth comes. But if we look at um, a, a little bit more in detail about labor productivity, we will see that labor productivity is low because people in agriculture work less. They work fewer days because there is nothing to do. Okay, so so this is uh, just some surveys from uh, some data uh, uh, from Malawi, and um, you see there on the top is is urban uh, employment, and uh, th these are calendar days, you know, calendar uh, uh, work calendar, and um, the the lower line is 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 rural. So people in agriculture work fewer days. Therefore, the productivity will be lower. Okay, so so if we are targeting something, that's what we have to target. We have to increase the days. You know, we have to increase the the days and the technologies that we want to um, to to promote there. They have to target exactly this problem. Um, this is also some um, you know the, the, some. Um, uh, data from uh, new varieties, you know, just basically green revolution type of, uh, of varieties that the, they require more employment and, and the dotted lines are how many days uh, people work in, 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 in under these new varieties, which has actually increased their employment, therefore the labor productivity has increased. Okay, so the technologies has also to, to take this into account. Also, you know, when we're talking about um, I mean, when when we're talking about youth in agriculture, we usually like to talk about uh, adoption of new technologies and and, and so on. But um, but again, looking uh, very uh, closely to this issue, we will see that why in, um, for example, in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, why do we have slow rates of adoption of new technologies? And um, because it is remarkably lower than the rest of the world. And um, we will see that, um, I mean, some of these constraints, um, uh, they have been identified by, you know, this is just a summary of some uh, research and overview. So, um, 
people usually say there are credit constraints, okay? And there's, there's a lot of work on this. But actually, we find that only 30% of the farmers that we surveyed needed credit. So credit was not a problem, okay? The, the, only 30% of them needed more credit to adopt the technology. Also, um, a, a lot of studies, they showed insurance. But, but here, we find that only 10% of the farmers used actually insurance. Um, Information, they say, you know, farmers are lacking information. But information, you know, providing information to farmers, extension and all that, is extremely difficult due to heterogeneity and, and, and so on. Um, and, um, and the input markets, uh, fertilizer and, and so on. So, so the distance from, for example, the source of, uh, of fertilizer decreases the rate of, uh, of adoption of uh, new fertilizer. Uh, so, if we're doing something, we have to look at the farmer's conditions. That is, you know, what is the state of their farm, their farmer's objectives, uh, and the farmer's capacity to adopt this technology. Um, and uh, j just to give you an example, um, uh, these are recent studies. They, they found, for example, that farmers, um, you know, all, all this discussion about uh, fertilizer use and so on. Okay, so in Zambia, only 88% of the farmers of, uh, have enough acidity on their farm to, to make the, you know, to make any, um, any use of the fertilizer. Okay, so let me, let me just uh, a couple of minutes and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm finishing with this with, um, uh, with um, um, my take on this. Okay, and this is actually coming from my book uh, that I mentioned at the beginning on, on, on Greek agriculture, because uh, this is the approach I use. So I think when we're looking at this whole issue of youth, employment, technology, agriculture, we have to look at, the, um, we have to take a chain approach. And when we look at the chain, uh, we have to consider different dimension on the chain. Okay, and um, these are the four dimensions I, I, I'm, I'm looking at, and I, I, I will show you in a moment the, ma the matrix that, um, that um, I'm, I'm trying to incorporate this. First of all, is size. Uh, so when we're looking at the, level, uh, the different levels of the chain, we have to appreciate and acknowledge that economies of size are different in the different levels. Okay? So when we're talking about large size, we have to really focus on which uh, level of the value chain, we want the large size, and where we are as efficient, uh, you know, with smaller size in, in other uh, levels. Uh, ownership also along the chain is very important. Who owns what? Okay, so we can consider different types of ownership uh, depending on which level of the chain we are and what the objectives we have. So we can have private ownership, so we, we can have, in, you know, the private uh, companies, we can have public or collective. Governance is the third dimension, it is very important. So what kind of governance do we want in the different levels of the chain? Is it, uh, or not only one, what is the most efficient? Do we, do we want atomistic, uh, hierarchical, that is vertical integration and so on, or uh, we can have hybrid uh, contractual and, and so on, and also the space. So. What I'm proposing is, uh, and, and this is what I, I, I use in my work, is uh, we, we, I'm, I'm, I, I want to use, I'm, I'm proposing that we should use this, uh, you know, two-dimensional matrix. Actually, it is more than two-dimensional because all these are a different dimensions. So if we, if we just take for a moment here the, the different levels of the value chain, starting even, uh, you know, incorporating here also policy, lobbying, research, education, and so on, farming is in the center, and then we go downstream, wholesale, processing, and, and so on. So uh, when we look at size, um, for example, uh, when we're talking about policy and, uh, and lobbying, we can only have large size there. But when you're looking at individual farming, we can have small farm. We can have small farms. So you don't need to have, you know, to, to increase your size in, in the primary production in order to have lobbying. So what you need in the different levels in order to achieve that, and that is the big trade-off. And I think that is really what we are missing in most of our work, of our work is that you need some collective action. 
And collective action, as we know very well, it has a high transaction costs. And, and this is, I think, where the trade-off is, and this is where we have failures um, in, in different economies. I found this, for example, in, in, in my case in, in Greece, and I find this, I encounter this very often in, um, in, uh, in Africa and so on, that it is, uh, it is the, um, you know, this uh, trade-off between small-scale small and large-scale that is needed in the different levels, and the only way you can achieve that is either if you choose Use, for example, a large owner, so you have a very large vertical integrated uh, firm uh, which does everything, does policy, does research, uh, does production and also the downstream retail and promotion and so on. Or you have smaller farms, uh, but they achieve that with, um, you know, with, uh, with collective action. We have examples like that in Northern Europe. Very successful examples, for instance, in, in, in Denmark and so on. And I'm... I'm um, I'm, uh, th this is my last slide, and, and uh, so if we have a strategy for youth in agriculture, uh, we have first of all to look not only in agriculture but have a view on, on rural development. So, so these um, business, these startups, they have to be uh, in in all the levels uh, of the chain, and they have to be also in um, not only in trying to to focus on agriculture but also in other uh, elements of rural development, other other jobs and so on. Um, it has to be demand oriented. Um, just to give you a little example, when we ran this workshop last year in in, um, in Kampala, which we will repeat this uh, this August, and we asked these uh, young entrepreneurs to develop, uh, you know, we we ran a two-day workshop. We gave them several problems. Ninety-nine percent of the projects they proposed were uh, were using mobile apps. Why? Because that's what they knew. Uh, did they solve any problem? No. Okay, so so any you know any technology, any startup, any any youth involvement in agriculture, it should be demand oriented, not supply oriented. It's it's not it's not enough what you know, what 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 you can do, and what is easy, because developing an app was easy. Whatever problem we were giving them, they were giving us an app. Okay, uh, we have to target the youth skills, and we have to target the chain levels. Um, and if we do that, we will kill two birds with one stone. Because a lot, our studies, they show that most of the problems in primary production, they're chain related. So if we target youth involvement in the different levels of the chain, and we unblock the bottlenecks of the chain, we will, we will do good to the farms, but also we will create employment uh, to the youth. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.